Hi everyone, Animal Girl here, back with another edition of Movie Talk. Now, as I stated last week, because we are in October and Halloween is just a few short weeks away, I thought it'd be fun to do uh, Movie Talk videos on movies that are creature features or have things along that line, just like I did last year. So, that being said, this week's video, or movie, is Beetlejuice. What's a yuppie ghost couple to do when their quaint New England home is overrun by trendy New Yorkers? Hire a freelance bio-exorcist to spook the invaders, of course. Okay, highlights of the movie. This movie was made back in 1988, so it is fairly old. Um, I mean, it's not, well, it's not really, really old. There are movies out there that are way older, but... In terms of other movies, it is fairly old. It, it's over 30, it's roughly 30 years old, give or take a few months, depending on exactly when the movie came out. So, I know to some people it's like, oh, that's not all that old. And to other people it's like, wow, 30 years, yeah, that's old. And when you look at it, comparing the um, special effects from this movie to more recent movies, like The Mummy, um you can see the difference, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, this was an American comedy fantasy film, um, so not really scary. The only reason I decided to do it this month is because it does deal with ghosts and we are getting into Halloween. And this movie was directed by Tim Burton, so again, it's not exactly scary or even really creepy, it's just kind of weird. Those of you who have seen other Tim Burton movies, like The Nightmare Before Christmas, The Nightmare Before Christmas, and Ed Edward Scissorhands, you know Tim Burton kind of goes into the weird factor a little bit. But I'm saying this in a very good way. Sometimes you want to see a movie that's a little out there, and a lot of Tim Burton's movies um, do have. that feel to them. It's, they're really out there to a degree. And again, that's in a good way. I mean, Tim Burton thinks outside the box with his movies, and that's what a good director should do. Um, now, this tells the story of a young couple who's haunting their former home in Connecticut after they died and hire an obnoxious ghost to help them drive away a family from New York who's just moved in. And yes, there was a spin-off cartoon series by the title of Beetlejuice as well. But there were several differences between the TV show and the movie. First off, the movie is live action, and the TV show is a cartoon. Second off, um, Lydia's parents do not know anything about her dealings with the supernatural um, or anything like that. Really, the only <laughs> big similarities is the town where the human part of the show takes place. Um, Lydia and her parents, Beetlejuice and the house. Um, other than that, there's, it's a big difference. Um, but we'll, um, I will not be doing a comparison video on the movie and the TV show because I don't have the TV show on DVD. I don't think I could even find the TV show on DVD. Um, if I can and I decide to do a TV talk video on the TV show, I might. But as of this point in time, I'm going to have to say no, I'm not going to do a comparison video on it. So um, I'm just letting you guys know. Okay, things I liked about this movie. First off, I liked the story. Now, is this a typical, is this a Halloween movie? 
no. It is not a Halloween movie. Just like The Mummy is not a traditional Halloween movie. And last year, Van Helsing and Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters and Paranorman were not Halloween movies. They just had that feel of a Halloween movie, which is why I did them in October. It's the same thing with this video, or this movie. It is not a Halloween movie. It's just got that feel to it. So I thought, what the heck? It's got that Halloween feel, might as well, for this. Um, I will probably do a movie closer to Halloween, possibly the week of Halloween, that will be a Halloween movie. Um, if not for Movie Talk, then definitely for mo my Movie Talk Special Edition, or Halloween Special Edition video, as I do plan to do one this year for that. If I have time, it depends on how work goes. Um, last... Secondly, I liked the ending. This movie, based on how the majority of the movie goes, has an ending you're not really expecting. Uh, it's, it's, um, how do I explain this without giving away the ending for those of you who have not seen it? Um, it's a twist ending, I'm going to say that, or at least in my opinion it's a twist ending. Um, and it was real. It, I really liked it. I thought it was really good. And um, going with the theme of the movie, it was really funny too. Lastly, I liked the special effects. Now, granted, this movie was made back in the '80s, so the effects on within this movie were not as good as, say, the effects in last week's movie, The Mummy, but again, you've got two completely different time periods here you're working with when the movies came out. This movie came back, came out in 1988. We did not have the technology to do super fantastic special effects like we do now. So, what so the effects that they did were actually really good for the time that they came, that the movie was made. They used a lot of stop and go photo shoots for a lot of the paranormal stuff, um, which I thought was very ingenious. Rather than just do wires and whatnot and puppets and everything, they, they did the stop and go, which is really good. I mean, Tim, Tim Burton's famous for that. Um, his movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas, is all stop and go, um, where you basically move, take the model, you move it just a scooch a little bit, take a photo, move the model just a little bit, take a photo. It's 3D animation. Um, or really early 3D animation. It's actually very early um, CG animation to a degree. Um, because CG animation's kind of, um, well, I'm not, uh, and I don't work in the film industry, so I don't really know what CG animation is, but I think it's very similar. And they use this a lot with, like, a lot of the old, um, 30s and 40 movies as well, um, stop and go animation. So it's not something that was new in the 80s. It was actually done fairly, um, earlier with a lot of the creature features there, um, that they, um, produced in there, a lot of the B-movies that came out in the um, 30s and 40s um, and whatnot. Um, but the stop and go animation that they used in this movie was actually very, very good. Um, you saw it a lot when um, Beetlejuice was doing his thing in the house and when they were in the netherworld. Um, you saw a lot of the stop and go animation there. Um, also the makeup effect in some of the um, Ghosts from the Netherworld and on Beetlejuice as well um, was actually really good. I mean, there were only a few ghosts that really weren't done up to look like ghosts. Um, the couple who's haunting the house, for instance, um, their caseworker, um, a janitor who works in the... Um, office that the majority of the netherworld is in within the movie and uh, I think the voodoo guy 
at the end of the movie. Um, but he had a little bit of makeup too, so I'm not going to really lump him in there as that. Um, um, but um, the couple, their caseworker and the one janitor, they did not have any makeup effects on them at all. Well, the couple did to a degree near the end of the movie, but um, that was minimal. Um, so, uh, it really was, um, good. They did a real, they, like, really did great makeup effect on that. Great special effects for the time, um, within this movie as well. I know I'm harping on the fact that I'm saying, that you know, for the time. But, um, when you're looking at a movie from 30 years ago, as opposed to a movie from that's fairly current, the effects are going to be night and day, but you also got to keep in mind there is that 30-year gap in between, so yeah, of course the technology is going to be up a little more um, on the more current movie than it was on the other movie, and maybe at the time those were the um, most up-to-date special effects at the time, so again, even though the movie is 30 years old, for the time period, I loved the effects um, from the time the movie was made. I thought it was actually very good. Okay, cast. There were a lot of people in this movie. I focused mainly on um, the couple that was haunting the house, um, Beetlejuice, of course, since it was the title role, the family that moved into the house, the interior decorator who helped the family who moved into the house, redo the house, and then the... Um, Maitland's caseworker. Um, so there's the list. Did you notice I have two spellings for Beetlejuice, the way it's spelled and the way it's pronounced. So I'm just going to let you read through there. Okay, question of the week. Since this movie had to do with the haunted house, and I have seen some quote-unquote reality shows about haunted houses, haunted castles, and other haunted places, and I heard a story from someone I know who talked about a weird encounter um, where she felt that something was just she woke up, felt like something was watching her, and there was nothing there. Um, my question to you guys is, have you ever had the feeling that something was watching you, even though you couldn't see it? Please leave your answers in the comment section. Also, feel free to leave your comments and questions in the comment section. I do love to read those. And please like and share this video if you're watching it on Facebook, or like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, and feel free to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter, Wattpad, and DeviantArt. I do have my name for those five sites right there on the screen, as well as the pictures I use for the icons. Please note, all pictures seen within this video belong to their respected artists. I own absolutely nothing. Also, on a side note with the question, please note I'm not saying that I actually believe in haunted houses. I'm just saying there is the possibility that you can get that feel from a place, um, particularly if it's a very old place. Um, so I'm not going either way on the, do you believe um, there is such a thing as a haunted house? I'm going to say I don't. I'm going to take a very neutral position on that if you were to ask, that, ask me that question in the comment section. Uh, I've seen a lot of evidence to prove it, but I've also seen a lot of evidence to disprove it. So I'm going to have to stay neutral on that if you ask that question. Now, if those of you out there, if somebody posts that question in the comment section and you want to answer it, feel free. Um, I'm just saying right now I'm going to take a neutral position and say, and not say anything one way or the other on that. Okay, quick reminder on my comment rules.
Hey, feel free to check out my other movie talk videos. My Movie Talk Special Edition videos. and my other videos.
before I sign off, two things I'd like to touch on. First off, and this is for my YouTube subscribers, um, TV Talk will be posted both to my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. If you'd like to check out any of the backlogged videos for TV Talk, those um, you can feel free to check them out on my Facebook page. I will have the link in the description section. And just so there's no confusion, here's a list of all the TV shows I've either done TV Talk videos on or I'm currently doing TV Talk videos on. As always, thank you for watching and have a very nice day.